I wanted to bring you an extraordinary gift, a new way of looking things, something that will help each one of you become healthier, live longer, and most importantly, live happier. Yeah, right, all of you are thinking, I saw that, she's a doctor, she's going to talk to me about eating right and exercising more. Those things are really important for you, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you today. I was an emergency doctor, and oftentimes when people were in the emergency room and I had to do what had to be done, I would stop and think, what caused this visit? Why and how did this person come to be in my care today? What was the sequence of events that could have been interrupted somewhere earlier on so that they wouldn't be as sick? And today, this visit wouldn't happen. And so I went and did what good doctors do. I looked for evidence. I reviewed hundreds of thousands of articles searching for that answer. And I discovered that 30% of the time, there wasn't anything much that could have been done. This was accidents, infections, genetics, things that are not entirely within our control yet. But 70% of the time, especially for the big six conditions that are currently crippling our healthcare system, so cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, all the autoimmune diseases, pain, and mental health, 70% of the time, the cause was correctable. And it was a single cause. It was stress. Stress determined whether or not you got sick. Stress determined whether or not you recovered from that illness and how well you could live with it. And I said, wow, this is, this is incredible. Why in our day and age where our standard of living is better than ever before and we have all these possibilities, why are we stressed? And yet, we know we are generation overwhelmed. We know we are all stressed. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands here today, but <laughs> you know the statistics. Angus Reid Institute actually published a study saying that 59% of families describe their daily life as overwhelming, and that's ordinary life, and that is three times the number of families compared to a decade ago. So I started wondering what's happening, why the stress? And it turns out that that daily grind, that unpredictable nature of life, the small changes that happen that we barely notice accumulate and make us feel stressed. And the dangerous thing about that type of stress is that biology didn't prepare us for it. Stress was supposed to be a good thing. When a tiger appears, it allows us to fight or flight. But it was meant to last a few minutes and allow us to have that superhuman strength to overcome the situation, and the outcome was clear within minutes. You lived or you died. Unfortunately, the exact same system is triggered through the daily stress you experience. That tiny little change causes a tiny little stress moment, the same system gets triggered, and after a while, it gets tired. It gets overused, and that leads to you being anxious and depressed and ultimately sick, even if you eat right and exercise. So what is there to be done? Well, back to the literature I went. And I discovered that there's something really simple, it's in fact deceptively simple, that most people overlook because it's so in your face. But it's that something has a direct and measurable impact on health outcomes. And that something isn't what the current trend is, which is opt out, simplify, you know, give up. Or the other trend that you hear everywhere, which is work harder than ever and lean in. Those are both valid for a little while, but they don't quite allow us to live the life we want to live. The simple thing I discovered that makes an incredible difference in our health and happiness is lean on. It's leaning on each other, it's connecting with each other, and that is the source of resilience that allows us to not become sick, or even if we were sick, to recover better. I said, well, that's great. You know, we are more connected than ever. We have social networks. We live in cities. We are all cities, citizens. We are physically closer to each other. But yet, we're disconnected because our personal lives depend on friends and family, people we know well. And because we move and travel so often, they're not present in our lives the way they used to be. That missing social network 
is not there, and it doesn't support our daily life, it doesn't reduce stress on a daily basis, and it's not there when crisis strikes, be it health or otherwise. So those insights I saw are things that others have seen as well, and you will, over the next couple of decades, see more and more programs, technology tools, and solutions that allow us to become more connected in real life. And as a futurist, I can tell you that the future is already here, just not evenly distributed. Some of you are experiencing this way of life, where you're better connected with others, where we've redefined what family means, what community means, and trust amongst strangers. But for too many, and I see that in my practice in the office, when things happen, we don't have that immediate network that can help us buffer against the stress of daily life. And so I went on the quest and I said, well, what if we can start implementing this um, in our own lives immediately and create our own program of random acts of kindness? And so I often get asked, um, how do you manage it all with three kids and work and interesting projects on the go? And I share my answer, which is when somebody says, can I give you a hand? Can I do something for you? My default answer is yes. Can I drive the kids to the park? Yes. Can I drop off some food? Yes. Do you need a ride? Yes. And I also go do the opposite, go out of my way to try and help people whenever I can. This is my own personal program of random acts of kindness. And so over the years, talking to people about adopting this, I've discovered that there's a number of things that prevent people from actually acting on that insight. And it's not one thing, because one thing would kind of be easy to overcome, but it's a combination of seven things. It's a combination between our society that encourages us to admire the model of doing it all yourself, of the solitary winner who stands up on the mountain and accomplishes everything. It's our society where when we get asked, how are you doing, fine, is the usual answer. Do you need help? No, is what people expect to hear. And it's reinforcing these type of uh, answers on panels where people say that I've accomplished it all and everything was perfect and everything was always fine. And so in my experience as a physician, I see the same person afterwards in the office and you discover that things were not fine and that their life would be better if they were able to acknowledge that. And when they acknowledged that, there was no backlash. And yet we are afraid of that backlash. So it's a combination of seven factors that prevent us from being more open to accepting and offering help. It's, I don't want to appear weak, or I don't want to imply that somebody else is by offering them assistance. I'm not sure who's available. Will I impose? Will I interrupt? Will it get done the way I like it to be done? Can I trust someone I don't know well with that activity? How do I thank them? Do I owe them? How do I return the favor? And I can give you a talk on each one of those seven things, but I think the simpler way forward is to encourage you to just do it. Try it once. When somebody in the next week asks you, can I offer you help? Your answer will be yes. And you will see that the benefits of doing so far outweigh any inconveniences or any of the concerns you might have had. Every time you ask and accept help, you become stronger. The research is absolutely clear about that. Every time you ask and accept help, you become stronger, you live happier and healthier and longer. And that is a really important message I wanted to share with you. I would invite you all to consider being more selfish and help others more often because it's in your best interest. I would encourage you all to consider becoming more generous by allowing others to help you because it's good for their health and well-being. Thank you.